Brian Head Wells from Corn. How you doing, brother? What's going on? Tell me about w- what Thanksgiving is like at uh, the Brian Welsh house. I mean, uh, to, to, are your folks still alive? Yeah, yeah, they both are. Uh, and it's funny because it's it's like a proper household, you know. And my parents are just totally normal. Okay. Do they and, ever uh, refer to you so the by opposite head? Of me, Never. Okay, so mom just kind of goes like, oh, that's silly. Stop it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when Corn first started, you guys had such a unique blending of sounds with uh, a rhythm section that was kind of inspired by hip hop and the really super low bass and the cool drum lines and the aggressiveness and, and a certain palpable anger from a vocal and guitar standpoint. Uh, over the span of a career, as all of a sudden you get a lot of success and the money that comes along with that, how has that changed the dynamic in the band? Um, it's pretty crazy because you know it's we're all dysfunctioning people, you know, or, or you know, people that are uh, just have dysfunction in their lives in every way. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, and so to be given all that, it's like it's a lot. You know, and and when you come from families, most of us, our families are have addiction, alcohol problems. So you mix that in with uh, success when you're not prepared for it. It's a, it's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, and that's what it was for us. You know, that we got through it. So do you keep somebody tight in your circle now or then, or was there one person that uh, that kind of was able to put up a mirror in front of you, someone that you trusted, somebody that wasn't just a yes person because they're on the payroll or whatever, to say, hey, man, here's how you're presenting. I mean, what do you do when you're looking for some bold face and sometimes often critical feedback that might sting a little bit? Who do you go to for that? I mean, we have people in our lives, but, you know, I don't think that we would even listen at the, when probably like you know eight to nine years in there could have been anybody talking to us we were just in one ear out the other because we were so we knew it all you know of course we were the successful ones you know in our minds and but uh the truth was we were the most unsuccessful ones because everything else in our lives was failing besides corn so you know when you when you're when you're a rich rock star and you have a broken family and your kids are suffering and divorce here, divorce there. And, you know, every, all five guys got divorced. So it was like, you know, that's, that's a failure when you're a drug addict, that's a failure. Right. And so it, it didn't come till we got a little bit older and, you know, we needed to learn humility, you know? And so we all got to, you know, basically just, uh, into that spot until we feel like you're in the gutter, you know? And right. then you start asking for help and listening. So what can you do, back to the original question, uh, what can you do now that you've got fame and fortune and everything that goes along with it, as Freddie Mercury would say, what do you do to still stay relatable to an audience that, um, I mean, it's not like it's not like you guys are hanging out, still hanging out of the merch booth after the show, and you can hang out with <laughs> every single fan, you know. And how do you still make that connection and write material that is still relevant? That's just that's still going to touch on the heartstrings and the minds of the commoners. Whether that commoner is a you know an eighteen year old kid that's uh, struggling going from high school to college, or the thirty two year old guy who discovered, or forty two year old guy that discovered corn way back when, and has had their own personal challenges. How do you still be relatable? And where do you get the angst from nowadays when you know all your bills are paid? <laughs> Well, there's a lot of other things in life that, uh, you know, can go wrong. And money's not, you know, the when you have money, it's not like the, everything's perfect, you know. Mm-hmm. But like our latest record, our singer's wife passed away. Oh, God, just um, a horrible, horrible during, tragedy, yeah. During the writing of the record. Mm. So that's where we got the angst for the last record. And um, the, the couple of records before that, when I just rejoined and everything, um it was him really getting his uh, his aggressions out on the fact that she was very very uh, sick and she was a, a massive addict and then he was trying to he was writing songs.
bones about, you know, a lot about that. And just the dude's a tortured soul, man. I'm telling you, mm-hmm. it's like, it's like he needs in order to be Jonathan Davis, he needs to go through like, all this trauma. <laughs> and, uh, so, you know, but we, us with all of us, you know, in life go through. Shit. And so that's what, that's what we've done with our band is process pain, you know? Yeah. We're talking to Brian uh, Head Welch. The show is going to happen here at the end of the month over at the Reno Event Center. Tickets and details at kdot.com. Corn with Breaking Benjamin and Bones UK. Brian, t- tell me about what you know about these two bands that are opening up. Obviously, you know, uh, Breaking Benjamin's been around for a while. Have you guys toured with them before? Yeah, we did. Uh, we we toured with them a bunch back in the day. And, um, and then they went away for five years, you know. Mm-hmm. And then Ben got a new band, and so they've been touring for the last... I think five or six years again and uh or more and uh, so we went out with them in 2014 i believe mm-hmm. and you know just everyone's got their head on straight we're you know most of us are sober or at least not killing ourselves you know drinking too much and sure. uh are doing drugs but yeah we hung out with him and, and him and the band and ben got a corn tattoo on his wrist on that tour so that wow. was pretty cool he's a big fan of the band yeah and vice versa we tell him all the time like we love his music and he's like ah, i'm nobody you know <laughs> you're corn i wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you but a lot of mutual respect and then bones uk they're from um europe and uh, obviously uk and uh they're amazing there's uh there's just a three-piece mm-hmm. and these two girls are in the front and it's just a different vibe you know they got their own sound and they were nominated for a grammy recently and so they're just they're awesome they could drink too I mean, oh my god little girls they oh could, my they god could drink good drunkest <laughs> interview i've ever had it was in las vegas right when bones when they were starting the marketing campaign around this thing uh, a year or so ago and it wasn't them that was drunk i mean they were drunk too but oh my god somebody slipped me an edible and i had no idea and i made the fateful uh, decision to yeah now after two or three bourbons and a glass of wine is a good time to try this edible and the rest is uh well uh it, it's on record somewhere but i never put it out to the general public thank god because it was that bad but really fun girls man but watch out if you go partying with them last time they were here in reno back in december we got blocked in with a snowstorm and i hung out with those girls till three o'clock in the morning in downtown reno before i finally said look i'm out of here if you want to ride back to your hotel you're on your own because i cannot hang out and party with you anymore they're a lot of fun and great musicians too. <laughs> carmen's a, just a, a stunning yeah yeah guitarist, yeah that's right yeah she just you know what who she play with like uh jeff beck she yes with, right is yeah. that right carmen was on the jeff beck record and then went out on tour with him yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's just amazing. She could probably just shred me under, you know, right under the table. So, well, but I don't know uh, about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, You're way too kind. We have man. a different style, put it that way. So totally, her, yeah, her, for her sure. Her leads, I don't know. Her leads could probably shred me, but we'll see. So maybe tell- we'll have a. Uh, contest there you go there you go i like that idea tell me about uh the latest album the nothing what went into writing this album what was different about this than any other corn record that you guys have done brian well going in with the music was just the thing where you know it's the same thing we go in and we just start okay we just start and we just start jamming we get in a room just start jamming and come up with riffs and then you know like like i said our singer's wife passed away and then things changed and and uh, i would i wouldn't say the the writing with the music changes it's just i think the purpose of the record was changing you know and and uh, it was just really really heavy and we didn't even know when to get started back into it you know yeah and uh but i would i would say that's what made it different and another thing cool uh is that jonathan our singer started falling in love with uh heavy music again because okay. you know he went through his different styles that he that he liked and whatnot and uh he just i don't know he's 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 come back around and uh i'm a, i'm just i'm a heavy guy i love heavy heavy music and so does monkey the other guitar player and so we were quite happy quite pleased to hear him saying that uh he wants to go back in that direction so well, that's awesome, man. I'm uh, I'm super stoked from what I've heard from the album so far. Uh, it's uh, it's another brilliant release from Corn. I love the cover with uh, with it, it looks like ropes or or it, 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 where did the cover come from? Who was who did the art for that? The wire guy. We call him the wire guy. The it's wire like guitar guy. cables. Okay. 
<laughs> okay, cool. And so, you know what? We were talking to this these guys that were doing the, uh, they, they did a lot of work with 21 Pilots, and we just bumped into them at a show in Nashville, and um, we started talking to them, and they sent over a bunch of ideas, visuals, mm-hmm. and there was just a bunch, like dozens, and, and we saw something like the wire guy where like, you know, I think Jonathan was the guy. He's like, this is what I feel like inside, man. This is just all just, uh, just chaos, you know? Sure. And so th- when you look at that, you kind of see chaos. And mm-hmm. so and that's what we went with. Very cool. Well, uh, had, again, I appreciate the call. The show's going to happen on Saturday, February 29th over at the Reno Event Center with Breaking Benjamin and Bones UK opening up. I, I know we've gone a little bit long here, but I have to ask one last question just because there are rumors sw- swirling that we might be doing this when you guys are in town, and that is coffee with corn. You guys have your own coffee, huh? Yep, yep, yep. The, you know what? The funny thing is I don't drink coffee. The other guys are just like addicts. <laughs> and so, yeah, if we do uh, – we have corn coffee, and um, the guys are just so like they're they're coffee connoisseurs, and so they know the taste, they know all that, and so yeah, we've been doing fun things, just doing doing some coffee with the with the fans and whatnot, and so. You won't see me there, but the other guys will be there. <laughs> That's cool. Well, I got to I got to say, the last time that I spoke with Jonathan Davis, uh, two and a half years ago down in Vegas, my uh, my best friend was along with me, and we started a rock star coffee brand and talked about the whole coffee marketing thing. So when I saw the corn coffee, I went, "Oh, I wonder if Jonathan really heard what we were trying to say." So we'll bring a sample of of our Reno uh, our Reno homemade stuff for the other guys in the band to to try. You don't get any. You know, all right, deal. <laughs> deal, I'm happy with that. Hey, why don't you, you guys should blindfold and see which one's the oh, best. I love that idea. That's going to happen. We're going to do right? that, and we'll videotape it. And, uh, and and if your coffee wins, then we'll post that. And then if it loses, it would be a horrible marketing technique, and we won't post anything. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, great great to talk to you, man. All I know right. you got other interviews. Thanks so much for uh, giving us a call today. Looking forward to seeing you in town here in a couple of weeks. Yeah, thanks for the uh, help getting the word out, man. We'll see you soon. No worries. Talk to you later.